Hey, what's going on everyone? Hope you're doing well. My name is Jacob and in this video and the next few videos, we're going to learn all about APIs and how to use them inside of Bubble. So if that sounds good, if you're someone who is new to APIs um, and struggles with understanding what they are, how to use them, uh, make sure to like and subscribe. We're going to start from the ground up. So I'm not going to assume any knowledge. And in fact, in this first video, um, we're not even going to touch the bubble editor. We're just going to talk about what AP, APIs are and why we would want to use them at more of a high level. So what are APIs? Um, API, as you can see on the screen here, uh, an API stands for Application Programming Interface. And if you were to go to Wikipedia and search what an API is, you would find this definition. So an application programming interface is a way for two or more computer programs to communicate with each other. It is a type of software interface offering a service to other pieces of software and so on and so on. Really, I think about it as a way for two computers to talk to one another. So a good example of this is um, imagine if you were building an application and for one feature of your application, you wanted to show your users what the weather was going to be like wherever they happen to be in the world okay now we could if we wanted to build this feature we could go out figure out how to make some sort of technology that will tell us what the weather is going to be like at any given place in the world fortunately for us there are other ways of doing that where we don't have to build that technology ourselves right instead of building that technology from scratch we might use something like the Open Weather API, which is this other service that exists. Uh, and what can we do with the Open Weather API? Well, Open Weather will have some data that we want, right, uh, about what the weather is going to be like at any given point in the world. And we can make an API request to their servers to get that data back, right? So the problem becomes instead of having to build our own weather technology, um, the problem becomes how do we interface with open weather in order to get what data we need back from them so that we can build this really cool feature inside of our application. And so that is what an API is for, that interface between these two computers, right? Between our program that we're building and open weather that has data that in our case, we want to get back and show to our users. A really good analogy that I've heard, um, and this is not my own thinking, so credit where credit is due. This is from Angela Yu. I'll leave a link to a course that I took with her on Udemy. It's a fantastic course. I'm not affiliated with it in, in any way, but if you're interested in learning um, really how to code um, and maybe taking those next steps beyond Bubble, I'd highly recommend it. So I'll leave the link for that below. But think about a restaurant, okay? So imagine yourself at a restaurant sitting in the dining area and you're at this restaurant, you're hungry. And if it's like any other restaurant, there's a kitchen and this kitchen is kind of behind the scenes out of view of you as the customer, right? So inside of this kitchen, there are all sorts of ingredients that this kitchen is going to use. Um, there's all sorts of cooking utensils, pots and pans, uh, different processes and all sorts of different data about previous orders, whatever it is, right? There's a whole bunch of stuff that exists in the kitchen that you as a regular customer at that restaurant don't get to see. But you at this restaurant, you're hungry, you want to order food, and this restaurant presumably wants to cook food for you, right? So you need a way to interface with this kitchen. The kitchen needs a way to interface with you uh, so that you can order food and that they can cook food for you and serve you food, right? So what does every restaurant have? Every restaurant has a menu. And what is a menu? A menu is essentially a list of different things that are available for you to order as a customer, right? So you can look at this menu. Um, this kitchen builds this menu. This restaurant builds the menu and says, this is what is available. This is what you as a customer can order, okay? so. I like that analogy. I think it's a helpful way to think about what APIs are. Now, there are many different styles of APIs that exist, but in the context of building web applications, the one that you will run into most often are REST APIs. REST stands for Representational State Transfer. 
And what is unique to REST APIs are these RESTful verbs right here that you may have seen. So get, post, put, patch, and delete. You may have also seen this acronym before, CRUD. CRUD stands for create, read, update, and delete. And why, why do we have this acronym CRUD? Well, if we're thinking about data, um, these are different actions that we can take with data, right? If we're working with a database, we're either creating new data, so creating new entries in a database, we're reading that data, which means what? We're basically retrieving data from a database and, and showing it to our users. Um, we can update existing data, so modifying entries inside of our database. And we can, of course, delete data entirely from our database. And the reason that I bring up this acronym CRUD is because these RESTful verbs that you're looking at on the left here, each one of these is a type of API request we can make. And each one corresponds to a type of action that we take, right? If we're making a GET request, typically what we're doing is reading information, right? We're making a request and information data is being returned to us. To go back to this restaurant analogy, imagine that uh, you're looking at a menu in a restaurant and at the bottom of the menu somewhere, it says, ask about our daily specials. So the waiter comes around, you ask about the daily specials. You're, you can think of that as kind of making a get request. You're making a request for information to be returned to you. In this case, information about the daily specials available. What about a post request? A post request is typically associated with creating new data on a server. Okay, so imagine you look at the menu and you decide that you're going to have the beef stew dinner. So the waiter comes around and you make a post request. That waiter will take that information, go to the kitchen, and inside of the kitchen, this beef stew dinner will be cooked up for you and information about, well, you'll receive a response from the kitchen, hopefully a perfectly cooked beef stew dinner. This analogy is not a perfect one, but I think it's, um, it's close enough and good enough to start thinking about these different types of requests that we make. Another, um, another real life example here could be Stripe. So um, one thing that you might wanna do if you're using Stripe's APIs is you might want to create a new subscription for one of your customers, right? Um, so in that case, you're going to make a post request probably to create that subscription on Stripe's servers and you're gonna send information about who that subscription is for, which customer that subscription is for inside of your request, right? Moving on to put and patch. Put and patch both have to do with updating existing data. Okay, so imagine the beef stew dinner gets returned to you. It's not that great. Maybe the carrots are a little undercooked and you're in a particularly nasty mood and you decide to return it. You say, bring me a brand new order with potatoes instead of carrots and cook the beef a little longer you could have also made maybe a patch request where instead of sending everything back and getting all of that, that whole meal replaced, you could just send the carrots back. You could say the carrots are a little undercooked. Could you heat them up for a few minutes? So there's a subtle difference between put and patch. Again, this analogy is um, it's not perfect, but I think it's close enough to start thinking about these, these different types of requests that we make. When you make a put request, you're sending data about you're sending information about what you want to update and you're sending all of the different fields to make that change to the existing data. Whereas if you're sending a patch request, you might only send back the one piece of data that you do want to update for that existing entry, right? So the put and patch are much less common than get and post requests. And there is a subtle difference between them. If, if it's a little bit confusing right now, don't worry, you don't have to memorize any of this stuff. Um, it will start to make more and more sense as we progress through these videos and as you get more and more practice um, in the real world dealing with APIs. Delete is uh, pretty self-explanatory. I think we can send delete requests. Again, a delete re type of request you'll see much less often than get and post requests. But imagine that you just are completely fed up with this restaurant. You say that was the worst meal I've ever had. Please forget it ever happened. And you just leave. You're making a delete request, right? 
Okay, um, a few more things that I wanna cover in this video before we dive into the bubble editor in the next video. You have heard me throughout this video use the terms request and response. Very important uh, when we're thinking about APIs, we make API requests and receive responses from a server, right? And another important term that we're going to explore more in the next video and videos after this one uh, is an endpoint, okay? So what is an endpoint? An endpoint is the digital, digital location where a request is sent. So if you look at that uh, URL below, api.stripe.com slash v1 slash charges, that is a place where we would make an API request. We can refer to it as an endpoint. Okay, so I hope you found that brief introduction to APIs helpful. In the next video, we're going to dive into the bubble editor. We're going to start interacting with a real live API. We're gonna start making requests. We're gonna receive some responses and we're going to use data that we receive in these responses inside of our bubble application. So I'll see you in the next video.